Okay, so here I am holding this Nabis system and I'm giving it a go, scanning the hall here at UW at the Santa Clara Convention Center. Now, I've already walked through a couple of the um, sort of, you know, initial setup uh, things you have to run through and I gave it a name and then I didn't have to change floor, room, or tell it which try this is. Um, but then I'm ready to go to start mapping, so I'm just going to hit start mapping. But the first thing I obviously have to do is initialize my SLAM. So I have to, you know, basically calibrate to the area that I'm in so that it knows where I am. So it says, please rotate at least 90 degrees to the left. So I'll start left. And that's about 90 degrees. And then it says initializing cameras, please wait. And actually the initialization happened really fast. So the next thing that I see is that I can see I'm already getting a preview of my data. Now I'm guessing that where it's filling in lighter means that it's actually capturing more data densely in that area. And as I walk, it's gonna just start to fill in all of that data. Now I can see the line of where I'm going, but in addition to that, I've got my pano button here. So I can take a pano in this position I'll probably be able to preview it if I tap on that. Let's just take a look. Yeah, and look, I can see what I just did. Now, it's not stitched together, but it's a good enough preview for me to understand, like, hey, oops, we didn't move the forklift. <laughs> so um, let's keep going. And I just want to see what it's like to go back out of this panel mode into scanning. And let's try moving it into an area with a lot of sunlight. Okay, so. Well, let's see what happens. And what I'm noticing right away is that because this is LiDAR, I've got at least three LiDAR uh, scanners in this um, Navis system. I've got one overhead, one in front, one behind, I think. No? Just two up on top? Okay, so because I've got those, well, what about this one? So it's the one in front and yep. one up top and then four cameras around the top. Okay, four cameras around the top. Okay. But what I noticed is that actually it filled in beautifully even though I was standing in the sunlight. So that's gonna be something that you're gonna overcome with a system like this. Whereas with your infrared scanners, you're not gonna be able to do that without a lot of like, you know, photogrammetry fudging in order to make it work. So again, LiDAR being superior when it comes to mixed environments, when it's sunny, uh, when you're maybe indoor and ha have a lot of sun, even though sometimes the type of glass can assist you um, if it has some UV filtration. But I bet I could even walk outside and get a decent scan. So that's why this thing costs $80,000 and not, mm, what, like $4,000, $2,000? So let's keep going and see what we learn. All right. What I can tell you is that I love it. Oh, and here's my, here's my co-founder, Bart, from my previous company. <laughs> and he's probably excited to see me testing this out. I am, he knows that I love to nerd out about scanning devices. Bart, you got to check this out. Are you in the middle of a call? I'm in a call, but I'm with you now. That is awesome. Isn't that awesome? Oh, you... I'm so lucky that I get to try this on. <laughs> you were wearing it well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's the fanciest scanning <laughs> device I've ever worn. Yeah, it definitely feels like the Tesla of scanning devices. Um, but, you know, I'm starting to feel the heft of it at 18 pounds and when you're holding it and it's not resting on your hips. It is definitely a much more, um, like, beefy uh, scanning device. So in previous iterations of the Navis systems, they've had them sort of on trolleys or uh, motorized robotic uh, navigation systems. But, you know, as with other systems we've seen, being nimble, being able to walk upstairs, being able to overcome things like tight spaces, and uh, just the human element of being able to know where you're going and not bump into a wall has to be like a big relief. So that is my take on this, scanning for the very first time, like two minutes of scanning with the Navis system. And anything else I should be uh, saying? Anything else you want to add? I think you've covered it. I mean, ease of use and quality of data is really sort of where we're at. Yeah, so, and, and maybe just a little bit more about these buttons here. Obviously, I've got my battery, my folders. I haven't taken any other panels, so maybe an assist to remind me that I haven't taken one in a while. Because I can uh, imagine being like, oops, I, I get a, I get a yeah. message on my phone, <laughs> and the next thing I know, I'm like, oh, yeah, what's for dinner? And then you'd forget what you're doing, so. Until it's second nature, we recommend using the auto capture. Yeah. And so you actually get to set whatever distance you want 
maybe a fraction of a meter or a dozen meters. And then as you go, it's actually gonna remind you it's time to take a pano. Then you'll stop and it'll automatically capture it once it has detected that you've stopped moving. Awesome, okay, so listen guys, even if you wanna do this in the sort of fail safe, foolproof way, you can set it to auto capture, you can take as many panels as you want, you can hide them later, um, but your data is gonna look amazing. I can already tell that this is a super dense scan, it's filled in so awesome, and I just wish I were able to keep scanning. <laughs> All right, so thanks so much, and I'm glad I got to demo it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay.